science. Yes, it's all about he's science. Our, he's our roadie. Yes, it's all about science. And we got scientists with us. Oh, <laughs> Nothing better than having scientists a scientist. Scientists in the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, uh, so this is uh, Think Tech. It's uh, Manoa. Uh, research in Manoa. R-I-M. R-I-M-I-R. No. R I R I M. I can do this. Rim. Okay, and uh, and we every every Monday, uh, courtesy the help of Rhett Butler at HIGP, Hawaii Institute for Geophysics and Planetology, we have scientists come down from that institute and also from its per parent instit institution, which is the School of Ocean Earth Science and Technology, right there on the far side of the engineering school, right yeah. down that down that road. It's Malka from the engineering yeah. school. Yeah. yeah. And fabulous to talk to you guys. I can't tell you what a thrill it is for me. I mean, and everybody really is like Mr. Science. <laughs> <laughs> the kids, you know. <laughs> Mr. and Ms. <laughs> and Ms. Science, thank you very much. So introductions now uh, here on Research in Manoa. Uh, we have to my left, Linda Martell. Uh, she is a academic support, academic support person, ASP. <laughs> what is that? Um, it takes a village to run classes <laughs> or research projects, so some people are the researchers and then some people are the team players. So I'm part of the, great idea, I'm part great of the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you, know, you, you didn't know this at first, but then you find out and you say, aha, this is what we were missing. <laughs> yeah. right, right. How long have you been there? 22 years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know how you do it's that. It's a fantastic Place yeah. to work. HIGP then. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and and what what kind of I mean is it any kind of academic support any kind oh. or just some kind? Oh, so my degree is in planetary geology, uh, bachelor's and master's, and um, where? Um, University of California Davis, and okay. then I went to Arizona State University for my master's, and there's okay. not that many schools that focus on planetary studies, so it's kind of a small community. So once you know people in one place, you. You meet them all over. So I started because we were doing a teaching um, module for moon rocks, and that was really fun. And it just grew from there. The you, look like, you look like you'd have fun no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> I love what I do. It's a, never a job. How about, uh, how about introducing the fellow at your left? So Let's do that. Jeff Taylor, planetary geologist and researcher at HIGP. Okay. Researcher, guess could say researcher. You know, you know, it sounds like, <laughs> oh, I'll go down into the carols, you know, in the bottom of the library, I'll, I'll do research. Therefore, I must be a researcher. It's not that, is it? No, it's doing experiments. Yeah. And here's the weird thing. My official title is researcher. Yeah. That's the official job title. It just distinguish it from the professors and associate professors who have the instructional plus research appointments. Whereas the researchers, which is HIGP, is almost entirely, we, we're official thing. is assistant researcher, associate researcher, and researcher. And whenever it's put, the top, you know, it gets, it's, the top it's a, such a strange title. It sounds like you, you just made it up, you know, or define yourself as a researcher. So when I write letters of recommendation, I sign them research professor of planetary science so, so, so that it doesn't mess up. Yeah, so they don't think I'm just some guy off the street. They, or in the carols. Yeah, some <laughs> student in the guy carols. in the carols what walking around. Walking around <laughs> and <laughs> but actually, you have 27 PhDs, don't you? In the... Uh, in the, in the HIGP? Yeah. Or just me? Just you. Just <laughs> just no, I only, have, I only have the six plus my <laughs> medical and law degrees. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you researching in? The, I re work mostly on the geochemical composition of the planets and how, how they evolve with melting and the effects of impacts stirring things up. And so we try to figure out what the planets are made of and how they got that way. This is really important. I mean, for all kinds of reasons. One is to have humanity advance as it should in science. Another is philosophical, that we know the nature of our universe. We can understand better. And our Earth. And our Earth. And our Earth. Earth. And just and it makes you look at the Earth in a new perspective. Yeah. You know, compare the Earth to Mars, the Earth to the Moon, the Earth and Moon system to Mars. And what, it's just, yeah, it's a whole different way of looking at the world around you. And this, yeah. it makes your world bigger. You know, it isn't just... <laughs> Oahu. <laughs> it isn't just the, the Earth, it's, it's this whole solar system and, of course, other solar systems. I, I think you really hit on something, no kidding. You know, I think in an island state, 
you tend to fold in on, you know, because you can't get out so easily. Uh, I know one person who is well into her 40s who has never left the island of Oahu. Mm. Okay, mm. now that's the opposite of going to other galaxies. <laughs> yeah, I know. And many people who grew up, and this, you know, everyone lives on an island. Uh, when I lived in New Mexico for a long time, people there never left New Mexico. Some people never left Albuquerque, where I lived. And so just, just by going out, you, you see things differently. When we ran a teacher's workshop, we took teachers out on this trip around southeast Oahu. Look at the geology. And afterwards, many of them said, I'll just never look at all these things the That's same great. way again. You achieved something that day. Yeah, and yeah. the same thing with introductory geology students when they go out. They see it. They actually, even though they're kids, you know, they, but they get involved, though, and they say, wow, this yeah, is really yeah. neat. So this travel is broadening, even if it's just travel around the block with a different set of glasses on. That's, yeah. it. That's what it is. You can yeah. see something. You've seen 10 times that you see it in a new way. Yeah. One of our big projects is bringing science to more people that we have this website, Planetary Science Research Discoveries. I thought you'd never get to it. <laughs> <laughs> a good NASA-funded uh, pro uh, program, and we, we dabble in all kinds of planetary science. That's what's so fun about that job. Is yeah. we're, we're taking the, the scientific literature that maybe only the experts talk about, and we rewrite it. Yeah, in fact, our, oh, our the opening minute. page There it is. is. I, think <laughs> I, I think I see it. You've made it appear, That's a, uh, science. Okay, what is that? This is the this is the website. You That's mentioned. the website. Yeah. So, so across the top, it. there's always this uh, navigation bar where you can t find out about us. Teachers need to know that we are uh, experts at what we're talking about, and they can um, rely on our information. And then down the left side, you see different um, stories that we've highlighted, and on the right side are different um, categories. We have uh, short reports and longer um, articles that explain the science, and even even with a glossary. So even a ever expanding <laughs> glossary, <laughs> and we have over 200 of these long, or, or about 200, approaching 200 mm -hmm. of the long articles. Example of a long article. Well, there's one right there. It's making and differentiating planets. That one, that's the most recent one. Although there is one almost complete, if <laughs> if, if the person writing it did not go on TV shows. Uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> we like that. <laughs> but this, that article was about using chemistry of the planets and. Of the physics of planet formation to try to say how much of this part of the solar system stuff went into the planet versus this stuff. When did it go in? It's, it is, may not be completely correct at the moment, but it's, the approach is so cool to try to say here's the planet as it grows, changes in composition. Wow, and I know. And they, yeah. and they show it, and other work uh, show it too. And so it's, it's a. So it's who so writes these articles? The original ones or me? The, these, well, the, the ones, ones we in the, saw. On the, the ones on in the, the magazine, side. in our web magazine, are written by Linda and me. Oh. And so some, we take, some guest authors. So we do get guest authors. Well, that's good. Mostly, mostly guest we, blogger kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mostly we, we take an article that we think is interesting and will be interesting to the public and translate it into English from the original geek. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it could be in Spanish or German. We don't do those. <laughs> we have been approached by people to translate our articles into Polish, <laughs> and we said, go right ahead. We, yeah. we want to be global. Yeah. yeah, we do, and it would be great to have them into other... So you other don't take a copyright on this, or do you? No, we, we like to get credit for doing it. Credit, but that's... But not, no copyright. The only thing that... Sometimes we get requests for graphics that we ask the authors for permission to use a graphic, mm -hmm. or the sometimes a journal, but usually we try to come up with our own independent graphics. But when we do, some people ask permission to use it for a textbook and other things like that, and so we just have to refer them to the, the author or the journal sure, sure, if we've sure, sure. taken it from a but journal. But that's great, though. You're writing for the public. You're translating yeah. from the geek to the regular, yeah. <laughs> and, and people really appreciate that, yeah, cause otherwise they wouldn't know, and, Should, and it's worldwide. Right. Yeah. Should we tell them, though, that not everybody appreciates it? Not the 13-year-old <laughs> student who wrote to us at one time? What, no, what, no. Did, what did that student say? <laughs> she said, you may have mentioned this before, all I wanted to know was some facts about Mercury, the planet. And you blabbed on, blab, 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 on and on and on. 
and you should write it <laughs> more carefully. Just answer, the <laughs> answer my homework question. Yeah. yeah, that was funny. Yeah, they don't realize how passionate you are about these things. That's the problem. She's probably in her twenties now. She we've been doing this is. now for the next. It's almost twenty years yeah. that we've had yeah. NASA really? funding yeah. to produce the page. And it's it's very fun to uh, sure. it's really satisfying and you know it's instant gratification. <laughs> you read an article, this is interesting, and you tr write the article about that article, and then you you don't you don't have to submit it to a journal and wait for it, wait for reviews. We just get it online, uh, check with the right. ask the it's original right authors. Published. We, I asked the original author to review it so that we didn't oversimplify things, you know, and make yeah. it incorrect. That's great. And then they give us suggestions, and then we put it online. It's great. It can be done in a week. <laughs> That's great. You're really bringing science to every man and woman. Do, do you take comments? You know. Yes, there is yeah. a comment. You know, and do you make them identify themselves, or do they go by handles? They don't. They don't need to identify themselves. They're welcome to. The, but not, the yeah. planetary scientists will will put their name on there if they're criticizing something. Some will write directly <laughs> to whoever wrote it. Ah, and just, give them that uh, just uh, email the, address. Yeah. yeah. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, this is great. There are students who will tell us that they needed to study for a big test. They couldn't read all the papers. They read our short reviews of the papers first, and, and it helped. This and is a real blessing. Nice. <laughs> Do you ever get comments from the original author of the paper saying, thank you, thank you, Linda. I have a oh, good, you, I have a good. You <laughs> said it better than I could have said it. You know? One of the yes, Mars, exactly that. <laughs> one of the Mars rover scientists, this was like one of the first rovers, he said, thank you so much for writing about the surface of Mars. My mom understands now what I do. <laughs> it's a real benefit. Yeah, yeah. And scientists read, other scientists who are not so much, a lot of this focus on geochemistry because that's the program at NASA that's been funding us. And uh, the ones not doing that, who do look at the surface of and geophysics and things like that, have complimented us, thanked us for having it because that helps them understand geochemistry without having to battle through mm -hmm. a complex technical article. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of a service to the public in that yeah, way. Otherwise, they might never really understand. Yeah. They may get a little lost in it. You know, not Other audiences are decision makers at NASA headquarters who, who need to know what their programs are. And are, quickly. What's going. And they can look at it and see what's coming on. It's very valuable. For them. They come with a slide now, too. They used to come okay. with three or four. We have, another, we have another graphic we want to show you now. By the way, I love the background. <laughs> okay, what is that now? This That's is still the, the web page. Part. That's the different... Um... Okay. okay. Oh, there. Oh, wait. Okay. We don't want to show that yet. <laughs> it, that's an intriguing picture, though. And there's our... P oh, PSRD it is. PSRD. It was P okay, it's, it's PSRD. <laughs> and it's, yeah. it's not PTSD. <laughs> no. That's a good one. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> We're going to fix that. You'll see. We're going to talk a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. In, in, in well, we could talk about. Well, that we're right going to talk about it after the break. Right? Yeah, after we the can break. talk we about it. Yeah, we can. You know that you, you guys are very helpful in terms of me doing breaks. <laughs> <laughs> you help me out on this. We've we're, been watching the why show. Why don't we take a break now? <laughs> Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Ko means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, and what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Ko. Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live. The three of us having a good time. You may have noticed that one of us has put on a uh, parka. An, an, an Antarctica parka. Okay, and that's Linda Martell. Oh. And to her left is Jeff Taylor. <laughs> she is an academic support person at HIGP, the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics <coughs> and Planetology. And, um, and Jeff is a researcher there. It's a big word. It's big a word. word. Big, big word. Big job. Okay, now there's a reason you put on this <laughs> outfit here in the studio. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. We're celebrating that SOAS, the School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology, just had an open house. Yesterday. Yes, yeah. Saturday. Friday and Saturday. 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 Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so part of my exhibit is uh, talking about meteorites and where people go to find meteorites. So I was on a team of eight people who went to Antarctica just for the job of finding meteorites. But I have to take this off now because yeah, <laughs> I'm overheating. Yeah. Now that's goose down. It exactly. really, really gets hot. Huh? There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you for doing that for us. <laughs> <Linda. laughs> <laughs> this picture shows what it was in real life, when it was a lifesaver to wear that jacket. Um, the polar plateaus, uh, it, first off, it's about two miles of ice uh -huh. uh, at the South Pole, with a little dusting of snow. It, it's a desert. It's a cold desert. It's a great place two to find. Two miles straight down, like that? Yeah, just ice. Um, oh this God. is where we lived for a month and a half, um, in those uh, yellow tents that are a uh, teepee kind of thing that looked just like um, Robert Falcon Scott's expedition. Yeah. Um, you can see the blue ice with a little dusting of snow. It's actually beautiful. So we spent a month and a half uh, on the snowmobiles and, and traversing the blue ice looking for No meteorites. bad weather. Um, a few, uh, there are days when you have to stay in the tent because there's enough wind to blow the snow and you have whiteout conditions. Yeah, okay. So okay. you read a lot of books. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. But, um, the sky, the brightness, is like that 24 hours in the summer oh, and the, right. at there's the South no, Pole. There's no night there there's in, in the summer. Right. right. It yeah. was very in nice. In the winter, it's night all the time. It's night all the time. Yeah. 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 Some people stay. But in the summer, there's probably there's 3,000 uh, researchers <laughs> and uh, field people out there in the summertime. Use uh, solar energy? We had a solar panel, and we had to just turn, face it to the sun, uh, you know, during the day, just angle it a different way to catch the sun. Cool, cool. <laughs> so it was a community service, that's what I felt like, um, to the researchers who look at meteorites. Um, if we past didn't... The past season, uh, which ended January of this year, mm -hmm. they found, I think, 900 something meteorites. meteorites. They found, that's a lot. I don't know, 50,000 altogether. There's a Japanese program, too, and a European one. So. Yeah. Uh, different countries and do this. Many are from Mars, the Moon, and, and, and rare types of asteroids we had never seen before. How so do you it's find really been them? a boom. How do you, how do you Visually, them? isn't that something? But are there on, they're on, on the ice? On the ice, ice or? like a lag deposit on the ice. Even and though and they. You, you would say, even if it was me, I would say, what is that doing? Because here? you're, in, doesn't look you're right. in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and the, it's ice the and rock this fell. Rock, yeah, mm -hmm. from nowhere. And the ice collects it, and the ice flows, but then there are hills that. The ice kind of stops, and the ice gets ablated away by the wind, and these things are there on the surface. Yeah, they're not even buried. They're okay, just so so you're walking around in that cold. Or snowmobiling. Or snowmobiling, which <laughs> sounds like more fun. And, okay, and you see this thing, this And rock. each person, if you're snowmobiling, you have a lane, and you have it's a very... A um, Why, organized. You don't want to mess up the, uh, uh, the, the You don't want to or... poach into somebody else's lane, <laughs> so you, cool. you're strictly <laughs> looking in your lane, and the first time... You, 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 don't go out, yeah. you don't go out and paint them first, do you? The lanes? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, or drop the rock. In. But it, oh, was, we're the first like people... Like on top of Mauna Kea, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> So, okay, so you, now you, you've got your snowmobile, and you've got your coat see a, on. We see a rock. See a rock, what do you do? So the snowmobiles are loud and you're kind of separated. Uh, so you have to get off and wave your arms and get everyone, everyone gathers, because everyone has a job. Somebody picks up the meteorite, puts it in a bag, somebody's getting the GPS coordinates, um, oh, cool. marking down any specifics about it. Yeah. Okay, so now you've got it in the bag. <laughs> you've taken some data about where you found it. They stay what do you do? Uh, frozen. On a ship to Los Angeles. Frozen? Uh, yeah. You they're, you, you, well, well, they're frozen to start with. We yeah. don't have, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're frozen. <laughs> <They're> all, <laughs> the are frozen. Our food is frozen. Yeah. They stay frozen until they get to Houston, Johnson Space Center. And, and they then, stay frozen there until they are taken out for characterization. Mm -hmm. You put them in some, some device that will keep them cold. A uh, freezer. Uh, freezer. <laughs> <laughs> High tech. <laughs> Cooler. <laughs> okay, so now you're in Houston, you take it out, what happens? So the, the wonderful people in, at Houston take them out and then do all the specific characterizations. So we rocks. know what kind of meteorite it is. And then it's shared, people apply to get pieces of it, and investigators from around the world apply for it. 
and, and are granted it if they have the facilities to do the study they want. I, I bet you the academic support people are the ones who treat those uh, applications. Huh? You rule on them? <laughs> no, this but there is a body, there is a, that committee that... Oh, is that right? In yeah. Houston? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, we have more pictures for this part of this program. Can we look Talking at Talking about open house a little bit more. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of open house. 6,000 people came to visit Friday and Saturday. And, uh, and this, so oh, this is Linda's exhibit. Each time there's an open house, I bring the boots that are specific to cold climates and the gloves and the jacket. And the I same jacket. The same <laughs> jacket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um, Which was worn by how many kids put it on, do you think? Oh, uh, I would 200. say 1,000. No. <laughs> Some big number, right? Uh, there's, we do have a picture of somebody modeling it because it, they're really cute. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Uh, it, it's a big deal to put the jacket on. I, I bet you it's a big deal to buy one too. Um, you know, we borrow with, we borrow these. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, a PRSD stands for Planetary Science Research Discoveries. Yep. Um, you see the big crowd in back there too. That's where we had the meteorites in this particular part of our floor. They sort of come into the room, and I, I tell them about where meteorites well, there, come from. And there's me. <laughs> doing an experiment with two of our graduate oh, students. Two of our graduate students. And see the buckets to the, or the, 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 the pans. storage pans to the right that have flour in it with colored paint on top. And we were throwing projectiles into it and making craters. And the woman closest to us, uh, standing on the outside, is named uh, Laura Corley. And she did experiments with a high-speed gun at NASA Ames Research Center in order to understand the impact process and, more important, its effect on the target. Uh, craters. Cra make craters and make melt. And we're looking there at a video of, that she took. Her projectile was going 14,000 miles an hour, though, <laughs> rather than dropping a, a ball bearing from yeah. a little kid's waist high. the process is the same. But much of it is the same. And yeah. they, they end up damaging crystals. And they're trying to understand what the effect is so that when we do remote sensing of, of the moon and other airless bodies, we can extract them. And they're layered targets. Isn't that cool? Look at oh, that. Isn't yes. that cool? That's, oh, the, wow. that's yeah. the movie. Isn't that <laughs> just <laughs> beautiful? So Watch this. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. It is beautiful. What is the material there in the box? Just okay. flour with, um, you know, those powdered, very bright, vibrant colored paints. Uh -huh. Okay. This is great. Impact <laughs> cratering is one of the most important processes on, on the okay. planet. So. You know, you look up at the moon, you see a whole bunch of circular features, and those are big, all Made big, high-speed impacts. Now, these same principles apply in other planets elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's universal. Yeah. Ooh, that means... It's everywhere in the universe. <laughs> everywhere. If you have rocks flying Earth. around, <laughs> they whack into things. And so anyway, we had kids drop it from different heights. And, and uh, as, the, as the open house wears on, especially on Saturday, Saturday is a smaller crowd, and the kids come with their parents. And there we get into the kids actually digging around in the flower. <laughs> <laughs> and they want to see everything. Flower is all over. Here's a meteorite section again. We, you know what's funny? We don't have a lot of pictures of anything else at Open House except nearby us. We and I was busy. telling people, I've never been to a Sost Open House. Because you always get stuck in one area mm -hmm. and stuck in a good way. I mean, doing yeah. your own yeah, thing because yeah, yeah. you can't tour everything else. Yeah. And you know, these exhibits went from everywhere from the seafloor to outer space. And, and all kinds of things in between with lava flows, ex lava, Volcanic explosions involving liquid nitrogen, water, outside. and a lot of a outside. lot of <laughs> cheering and yeah. clapping. Outside, <laughs> that's an outside one. So, what kind of reaction do you get from the kids? Oh, the kids, the kids yeah, love they it. They must really. This they, is. They do. They. It's the noise level is great because they're so into it. <laughs> they get so you know? excited. It, oh, it's really. It's a. Uh, it's, it's great. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is very good to do this kind of open house in Hawaii. I mean. They, they could never get this in school, sorry. Um, and I remember going to, uh, I wanted to go to your, your uh, open house this past week, couldn't make it, but I remember uh, going to the open house at IFA. Uh -huh. Oh, and they come from miles around. Yeah. These yeah. grown men are completely reduced to kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They get yeah. so yeah. excited. Every walk of life, every <laughs> profession, every business activity, they become kids, all of them. Yeah. Uh, 
Sci what are scientists? We never lost that. Yeah, I mean, it's always right. on the surface, right? right that that right, right. excitement. I can tell. <laughs> you know, and there are the things on display. There, are, there, there was a whole area of fish from the seafloor. Mm. Not, not the fish you catch normally, but fish from the seafloor. Well, where else are you going to get to see that except for some big and big time oceanographic institute? Yeah. We also could see that we had meteorites in little thin slices in the microscope and a disk of meteorites, which is actually the first education project that we had worked on yeah. was education stuff to go with that. And I had two little vials filled with moon dirt in my pocket. Moon dirt? Yeah. Wow, I don't have any of that. You, yeah. <laughs> And you're not going to get any because uh, <laughs> if I were to do that, the FBI would be involved. <laughs> okay. And it turns out it's illegal to sell it on eBay. Interesting. Oh, yeah. I, uh, like I like spent quite a time. Uh, <laughs> there was a gap in my record uh, due to the jail time. <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> Jeff Taylor. He's identifying himself and telling all. Helen. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Taylor, a researcher. And that really means a scientific researcher. And Linda Martell, an academic support person. And that really means a scientific research academic support person. That's right. Yeah. Both with HIGP and SOEST. Uh, we're talking about research at Manoa and having a wonderful time. We'll be right back after the short break. You'll see. Aloha. I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, and I host Sustainable Hawaii every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. My guests offer insights on challenging economic and environmental issues facing our state and offer innovative solutions to increasing Hawaii's long-term sustainability. Recently, we've been focusing on sustainable land development, food, and energy security. If you have a project or issue you'd like to discuss on the show or would like to be a guest, please contact me at kirstenbturner at gmail.com and tune in live weekly or view the show at your convenience at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo. Bingo, I told you, I told you we'd be back, and we are back. That's Linda Martell and Jeff Taylor from uh, HIGP and uh, SOS Research in Manila here today. And so uh, we're talking more about uh, the Mars Project with high school kids. First of all, um, what about Mars? Did you see the movie? Oh, I just saw it yesterday, finally. Yeah, yeah. I read the book. Uh, right, they say the book was better. Yeah. You know, the movie's really good, and it was very faithful to the book. Too, yeah. and it just shows it shows human problem solving yep. yeah it's that's the part <laughs> that's the thing and yeah. and you know if you send a rover to a planet and it breaks it, it can't fix itself although it's amazing what they can do remotely to fix something yeah. but when you have a person the, the life is more precious than a rover's pr lifetime but they have this brain that is so good at problem solving you know, it really is. It's great. It happened during That's Apollo, how you know. survived on the planet. Well, yeah. It happened, well, yeah. And it happened during Apollo. You know, we were driving, they were driving this rover. They had a car, the last three missions, and a fender fell off. Uh, and it was, it was blowing up dust, and it was getting all over them. So they used a map and the thing you should never leave home without, duct tape. Duct tape. And they taped it on the frame and solved the problem. And, but there are a lot of other more scientific examples of how <laughs> having a human along really makes a big difference. That, but that is, that is the, the really catchy part of the movie, the part you don't forget, where he runs into all of these issues. Yeah. There's a problem every minute, and yeah. you watch him figure it out, and that is such a thrill. Mm -hmm. And you guys, as scientists, you do that for a living <laughs> all day long. It is. It is. It's problem solving and figuring things out. It's just so... It's, yeah, it's, it's like we've never had jobs. Yeah, yeah. Where do I sign up? <laughs> Listen to his answer because you can sign up too. <laughs> what do That's I have right. to study to be you? You have to, you have to like science and study it and study all of it. Um, because now more and more sciences are merging. You know, you are doing it, it's nicknamed interdisciplinary research, but in fact, it's really being done now. And uh, there's, it's true in biology merging with geology. And um, planet formation is physics, chemistry, and geology. And it, all these things are coming together. So the more you know, the better. Yeah. yeah. And, and don't forget the math stuff. Don't, well, you know, I asked a guy one time, you know, um, uh, what did I say? Uh, uh, are, are you a mathematician? And he said, isn't everybody? <laughs> isn't that something? What do yeah. I have to study to be you? Yeah. You, you have to do what he said, but have the stick-to-itness uh, in you. 
Okay. <laughs> right. None of this stuff is particularly easy to a lot of people, yeah. And, yeah. but if you love it, you'll make it. Give me an example. So there's, a, there's some kind of research going on, um, you have a project going, and uh, what's the value added that you provide? You're going to say, wait a minute, Jeff. You got to do this. You, you forgot to do this. Oh How no, that that's work? not so much it. But when you um, propose to NASA, you have to be very specific about the steps you're going to do. So we have that all worked out. But um, it could be just day-to-day -day things like you know running all the lunar samples that you're supposed to get done in a certain time frame or something like that. But I think we're making maps. She's done a lot of Mars maps, geochemical Mars maps. And, Doesn't everybody? And, uh, I I thought they did, but apparently <laughs> there's a paucity of Mars geochemical mappers. From the orbit, the, the light is bouncing off the surface, and people at UH are are figuring out what chemicals and minerals are on the surface. That's fabulous. Amazing. So we wanted to bring that. Well, Space Grant, the Space Grant Consortium, asked us if we would work with some high school kids to sort of tell them about Mars. So we said, okay. <laughs> okay sure. We did. So we worked, this is our, we worked with a second group that we've had. We have pictures of that. This group we? came from, uh, this was their target. There were six students from uh, Punahou and Kalani High. Yeah. Working and together they landed as a team. Gale Crater. They were talking about the landing site. See that little ellipse up in the top? That's where the, the target for the Curiosity rover, mm -hmm. and it landed right in the middle of it. But before we leave that crater, is that is that the same kind of um, physical yeah. process that we looked yes, at before? Yes, it is. It's how the crater gets But made. on Mars, this was, in addition, it ha it ended up being filled with sediments at one point. Over time. That, that were, yeah. were laid down by water. Yeah. And so, anyway, they went to this site and the, the team, these great students, we're going to determine the mineralogy of a, of a simulant we made up, just like an instrument did on Curiosity. Here's the selfie that the Curiosity rover took. <laughs> the rover is doing a selfie. Yeah, yeah. isn't that funny? And, and this is a great thing. This instrument, see the big instrument on the left? It's the size of a double-wide, giant double-wide freezer refrigerator. Yeah. Well, it was miniaturized to the thing in the upper right that has a circle around it. Same, same, same functionality. Same functionality, and there's a commercial spinoff uh, in the orange box on the bottom right picture, and the guy standing, uh, kneeling there is the co-inventor of the technique that made it possible to miniaturize it. His name is Dave Blake. He's at NASA Ames Research Center. Mm -hmm. This thing is called Kemen, and it shoots X. How do you spell that? C-H-E-M-I-N. Uh -huh. It's on the rover. With a capital M. And, and yeah, it shoots x-rays, and the x-rays bounce off crystal planes, and it allows you to identify what minerals are there. So, C-H-E, yep. that's for chemistry, mm -hmm. yep. and min is for minerals. Whoa! Scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, the name came up, a guy named Dave Vanneman on this team uh, thought it up. That's <laughs> great. So we have one of those orange boxes with the commercial version. So we said, let's teach it to the high school students. So oh, great. there they are with, with our uh, little Terra instrument, it's called. Okay, yep. so what did you... And what did in you the background is Dave Blake, the principal investigator okay. and co-inventor. He was visiting and he met with them for an hour so they could ask him all sorts of questions about not only how do you miniaturize that big instrument, but what's it like working on a Mars team? Had great stories. That's that's amazing to have that in the box. And this is like any any uh, chemical, any mineral in the universe, yeah. anything on the anything periodic that table. Had, and yeah. Anything that has a crystal structure. And in fact, one of the things Dave Blake is interested in is to develop the whole techniques to to uh, study drugs, because there's a real problem of counterfeit drugs, or drugs that aren't made up the standards I mean, and they are get they're, they're sold in the third world and so people get the wrong dose it's bit hard enough for them to get medicines at all let alone legitimate to get medicines, medicines, mm -hmm. medicines or bad medicines bad, well or both both well, it's hard enough for them to get <laughs> legitimate ones but legitimate ones will have the right structure and you have the right chemicals in it and this instrument can tell can tell that That's too and he's great. trying he, he and his wife have founded a nonprofit to try to to get enough funding together to spread this to the third, the third world places and train people 
to when they get a batch of medicine in to check. You only have to check one pill to make sure that it's it is proper. That's great. And yeah. so yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's another sp that's that's a space sure. I mean, spin. There it too. is. It's a yeah. space thing yeah. Yeah. that can be converted to something very. Mm, yeah. Uh, and this little gizmo yeah. actually terrestrial. <laughs> yeah, and it can be made. The real gizmo, if you take the box away, is portable. That's why it has a big uh, orange case. But it's the size of a toaster. Yeah. It's never been done. I much understand before. you can go on Amazon and buy a package deal of that box and this jacket. <laughs> You're ready for Mars. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And for, and for only $50,000. Right. Thank you. In fact, for only $50,000, we'll send you this Parker. <laughs> so they just send a check to the UH Foundation. <laughs> Got more pictures? I think we do. Let's see what we we got do there. have some. Okay. Uh, you know what that is? That's a complex X-ray spectrum of a mixture we made up. The, we um, took the students into the chemistry lab with powder, mineral powders, and they had to make their own mixture, and then they ran it through the machine, and then we said, okay, figure out what's, oh, <laughs> great little test. what's in it. They must have been so excited about that. What's XRD stand for? X-ray diffraction. Uh, okay. And it's the, it's the gold standard for determining mineral, what minerals are there, or any crystalline substance. And this is the first time and it's ever been off the, the planet. And we made this concoction to kind of match what the Curiosity rover had seen. <laughs> right. and, and see the big peak on the far left? That's where the clay minerals hang out, and that's what Curiosity rover saw, saw which is clay minerals contain water, mm -hmm. and they need water, and a lot of it, and neutral water to to uh, make, make it. Like and that. This is what you land. start with. Yeah, and see these nice kind of layered rocks. So that's rocks. a picture from the rover looking at its surroundings. And this, millions of years ago, it was a, a lake. Yeah, well, this looks just like the movie. <laughs> See, they did a good job. I know. <laughs> I, I can see him out there with his rover. Yeah, isn't that something? So the rover's been on Mars for three years already, and it's still doing a great job. They're still they're roving towards the base of a mountain. They're finding yeah. all sorts of... But you know, it looks, like, it looks like Earth. It looks like a desert. It looks like real Earth, real... I, oh, you know, and you does. can see into through the atmosphere. Yeah. You can see the sky looks like real sky. Oh, it does look just. But you like couldn't it. actually exist in this environment. No, the atmosphere is not uh, not enough atmosphere and no uh, not enough oxygen in there's it. Bad radiation. Uh, and radiation <laughs> and. Because there's no atmosphere. Yeah, we. No atmosphere. You only should send movie actors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or in, resourceful people like uh, Mark Watley. Wat Watley, what's his name? <laughs> Okay, so the story of water on Mars. This, this is sort of what the high school kids were um, studying. So are, are you saying that there used to be water and there isn't water now? There is frozen water. And, uh, but there is, back in the, uh, there was much more, there were periods of liquid water on Mars. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the clay minerals. Wait, Plus, wait, we wait, see wait, old wait. river we see, valleys. We see old river valleys. And Delta. in one of the instruments we worked on in a Mars orbiter, we can see that there's a there's gigantic, it measures hydrogen, but it, it, there's so much hydrogen, it has to be in the form of uh, frozen H2O or in minerals. Yeah. And uh, so there's plenty of water on Mars, but there isn't any liquid water now, except very rarely intermittently, like on those little streaks you those see on the dark streaks that falling bottom, down the, the, the bottom one. Yeah. That may have, it's, they're kind of damp. That just came out in the news, like with, within weeks, while the students were working on their project. So they were Same thrilled. Idea. They yeah. were thrilled. But yeah. we said well, it's not habitable kind of water, it's salty water. So, you know, with this, 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 the whole notion is that we think of these planets as like static. This is the way it is, oh, yeah. this is the way yeah. it was, this is the way it will be. It's like photographs, doesn't move. And yet, mm. here, we learn about the history of Mars. I mean, wow, yeah. that's and a whole things, new dimension. And things change with time. Yeah. That's much of what planetary science does. What is the history? What was it like at the very beginning when yeah. it was just, just formed and forming yeah. to, to its biggest impact periods, its biggest volcanic periods, and then some of them settle down. The moon, nothing much has happened in the last billion years on the moon, and Mars is not much magma, you know, not, no volcanoes lately, <laughs> but okay. Venus might. Oh, no, so not. you know, it's all this. It's the comparison of one to the other. And so to Earth, interesting. back and forth to them, Earth to can, these can other you, planets. Can you date things with the, the orange box? No. You can we just tell what, what it is now. Yeah. No, but that is something we can. They actually did date this. In, in, they had a. It was a really.
kind of jury rigged way of doing it, but it worked. It seems to have worked. But age dating is is really a difficult thing, yeah. and it probably, to be really accurate, has to wait for sample return. On the other hand, it depends on what problem you're addressing. If you really want to know that a surface on Mars, like if you land on a lava flow, you want to know if that's a billion years old or three billion, you could do that with an automatic lander without any trouble. But you want it more refined than that. It, yeah, yeah, I, I you think know, you Everett, do. Everett Dirksen used to say this, a billion here, a, a billion, billion there. <laughs> Pretty soon you're talking real money. <laughs> Why don't you guys take a minute and address the, uh, the kids there behind that camera over there. That's the one. And tell them, you know, that next time there's one of these open houses, they really have to come down, you know. No yes, bullying. everyone, not only the kids, but their parents should come down to open house. <laughs> and as I said before, it's everything from the seafloor to outer space and biology and geology. There's uh, physics of oceans. Uh, and it is really fun to go to, and I hope I get to go and see all the things someday myself. <laughs> Take me with you. I'll carry your bag. <laughs> or your orange box. And it's very, I must say, it's very well organized. This committee organizes it, led by this year by uh, Marcy Grabowski, and it's, it's so well put together. It's all volunteer, and uh, although all, all of us, there's no reluctance on anyone's part, I think, who work in SOST. To do this, yeah. and it's uh, it's uh, everyone wants to do it, and it's, uh, sure. it's 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 a fun thing to do. Sure, I, I mean it's like every scientist wants to be able to explain his science <laughs> and the truth yeah. to yeah. other yeah. scientists, but also to other people too. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what do you want to say to the kids? Tell tell them they should study this stuff. <laughs> Tell them we need more scientists in this country. Ah. Tell them to go to PSRD. <laughs> That's right. And you're, you're supposed to say, well, I would, would tell them something if you guys would shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, never lose your curiosity. Uh, that's what science is all about, science and engineering, mm, solving problems. But then you come up with new questions. That's, that's the fun of research, new questions all the time. We don't have the answers. We have the... What did the bear see when he came over the mountain? He saw another mountain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it never ends. More fun. All, <laughs> yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's Linda Bartell. She's having fun. And Jeff Taylor's having fun, too. <laughs> They're from HIGP, the Hawaii Institute of uh, Physics and Planetology. Wait, Geophysics and Planetology. That's so est. And we have fun. And we're going to do this again and again, right? Yes, we are. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jeff. Aloha. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <laughs>